folks. <clears throat> Thank you. Welcome everybody to the seventh on the nail reading here at the Lock Bar, brought to you in association with the Limerick Writers Centre. Our guest readers tonight are all from Galway, Kevin Higgins, Susan Miller, Dumars and Mary Maddock. So we'll start off with uh, our Western friends. Our first uh, reader is Mary Maddock, and who was born in County Mayo. She started writing poetry about six years ago, and since then has published in Cron Oak, West 47, The Court Annual, The Shop, The Sunday Tribune, Wow, and Iota, among others. In spring 2007, she was chosen for the Poetry Ireland introductions. She was runner-up in the Raftery competition and published in the Windows Anthology. She also organises a community writing project, a way bit towards for people with intellectual disabilities. Mary won the 2008 Hennessy Literary Award for Emerging Poetry. She is a participant in Kevin Higgins' Advanced Poetry Workshop at Galway Arts Centre and read at the 2008 Court Festival, Over the Edge, Showcase, Reading. Mary's first collection of poems, in other words, is just published by Salmon Poetry, Mary Maddock. Good evening, everyone. It's a real pleasure to uh, read in Limerick. I don't know very many people in Limerick, but I came here a few times during the summer, and I have to say I found it very friendly. Um, I'm going to read a selection from my published book and uh, it's kind of like a new baby, I'm just getting used to it. And the first poem I'd like to read is um, a poem that will tell you a little bit about me. I think everyone expects you to do that in your first book and it's called Twin. The first time I dreamt Someone else was in my world. I turned, floating inside by a dark red light, surprised by another creating tides. Against purple rib railings, arching to tunnel the anticipatory light of early morning, beginning of life. And then I'd like to um, read a poem that's the title of the book, in other words. And uh, this is the poem that won the Hennessy Award. And I'm all surprised, pleasantly. Um, I suppose it's, you know, I, I bet there are lots of you out there who write. So uh, the lesson to be taken from it is that you always have to respect for uh, all your rantings and ravings because one day they could turn out into a prize-winning poem. And that's how this poem started off. And now I have to find the page, you know, that's the problem with this. Um, okay. Because this poem started off as a rant that, uh, for a class exercise and I was so embarrassed by it that I hadn't even, um, I hadn't even printed it out properly. And then I left it for a long time and I went back to it. And I kind of explored more why the person, there was a real person in, in the poem, um, why this person aggravated and irritated me. And uh, I discovered that it was a lot deeper really than just my own personal anger. And I suppose for me, it's a poem about um, the cultural division, in a way, that exists in Ireland between the east and the west of the country. And that's what this uh, persona that who's under attack in this poem is about for me. In other words, I'd like to gloss your postmodern grin with a labiodental fricative to begin, then a bilabial plosive. God knows what would come out if I started to use my West of the Shannon round vowels which you are colonizing. As you purse your lips 
to front yours. I notice that it goes very well with your chic about town suit. You speak foreign D4 to the men in my parts, who respect sibilance that don't make a difference. Know that stop is a surprise, not a rural marker, separating them from the wise fellas up at the university. Or a noun, something they would do to sort out a poser like you. You flex your intellectual biceps, obsessed not only by your manhood, but by the kind of man you are. The genre, an, un an obtrusive voice, your life, a metafiction, a revised identity. Now, your grandmother, a professional woman, who walked to school from May to October in her bare feet, is unsure about her story. It is not one of the images you are staying with today. Your voice echoes in the 1970s box architecture of the new Irish University, hollow as Plato's cave. The sign of the times, no more than the minute silence for Guinness, for Irish before the singing of the national anthem. The men in my part still check the sky for the weather, are ensconced in a world that loves them, will turn up for the funeral, pay respects to one of the best. You wish your words had meaning like theirs. It's what you left behind. Men pulling their wellies up over wool socks to go out on the land, while you lace up your expensive trainers to jog on an asphalt running track. You can hear the chortling of a bird coaxing you back to your senses. It would be too much like innocence to know whether it is the lark in the morning, a sparrow chattering, or a robin claiming territory. You put up the volume, adjust your earphones, check the zapper for the electric gate is in your pocket. Home is only a block away. <laughs>